This episode of the Nurse Practitioner Podcast is sponsored by Dakins. When you're treating persistent, hard to heal, or complex wounds, you need a solution you can trust, like Dakins Wound Cleanser. Just how powerful is it? Dakins Wound Cleanser has been proven to kill even highly resistant bacteria, like MRSA and VRE, within only 30 seconds. It's non-cytotoxic, shelf-stable for two years, and more cost-effective than other wound cleanser brands. When you need a solution you can count on, ask for Dakins. In this episode of the Nurse Practitioner Podcast, Dr. Efrat Lamandre discusses inflammation. Thanks for joining us today on this episode. Would you mind introducing yourself and sharing a bit about your background? Thanks so much for having me. Um, so as you said, my name is Efrat Lamandre, and everyone calls me E or Dr. E. And um, I'm a family nurse practitioner. I started off with a primary care practice, which has evolved to over 20,000 patients here in New York. And in the past few years, I transitioned over to integrative medicine to a practice that we now called The New Method. And I really am so excited to be here today. And what made you decide to switch from primary care to integrative practice? So primary care is crucial and it is important. And anyone who's listening, we all agree on that. But the problem with primary care is that it looks for disease. So that's a problem. It's also an asset, of course. So you go for your annual visit and you do your blood test and then you're advised, hey, you don't have a disease. You're great. I'll see you in a year. I'll see you in three months. Or maybe you do have a disease. I'll give you some medication and we'll do a follow-up. And that's pretty much the extent of what primary care does. It looks for disease and then it treats it. And of course, that's important. We want to know if we have disease. But what we discovered over time, and I'll share a personal story in a moment, but what we discovered over time is that there's a whole world of non-disease. There's a whole world of just not feeling well, but not actually being sick. And primary care cannot address that. It doesn't have room for pre-disease. So over time, I decided that I need to give my patients more. And that's when I transitioned over to integrative medicine. And integrative is key because it still does primary care, still does all the things. If you have a disease, you certainly need some medication, depending on the disease. But it also allows for, you know, shades of gray, shades of wellness. And maybe you just don't feel well and there's, you can't really pinpoint it in primary care. So that's a short, long answer of why I'm in there. But if you allow me, I'd love to share a personal story about that. This is a story I tell a lot on my own uh, lives and in my talks. And if anyone you know finds me, you might hear it on repeat. But the story goes like this. When I met my wife, she was a vampire. And not the cool kind of vampire, not the immortal kind or the kind that glistens in the sun or that moves really fast. But what made her a vampire is that she was allergic to the sun. She has an, an autoimmune issue called PMLE, stands for polymorphous light eruption any of you guys listening out there have this, there is a better way. And that basically meant that she was allergic to the sun. So we accommodated, like many of you listening, when you get your first diagnosis or maybe your first pill or the first time you feel aches and pains, you kind of, you know, grin and bear through it and you get through the day and you move through it. You take your pill or you take your diagnosis and you're like, we can handle this. And so we did that. We handled it. We went out in the afternoon, in the evening, if we had to be out in the day. We, were, we walked on the not sunny side of the street and we were fine, right? Because everything's fine. We got this. But then, like many people who suffer with autoimmune issues, she developed a second autoimmune disease. And that could happen to anyone out there who knows about autoimmunity. You know that once you get one, you get another. And so when she had the second autoimmune disease, it was psoriasis. And it was a difficult kind of psoriasis. It was on her hands and on her feet. So she couldn't button her shirts without pain. She couldn't walk for a long time without bleeding. So this really drove us to try to find another solution. In conventional medicine, and I'm not against conventional medicine, but all they offered us was high dose medication. And we didn't think that that's what we wanted to do. So we started searching and we found something called functional medicine and we had never heard of that. So insert eye roll here. If you saw me on camera, you'd see that I eye rolled heavily, but I was like, we have nothing to lose. So we went to this functional medicine doctor. And he did this crazy blood work that we never heard of. Now, mind you, I'm in medicine. My wife is a PA, so she's in medicine. All our friends are in medicine. So you would think that we would have heard of some of these blood tests, but we didn't. And it turns out that he changed her diet completely. 
put her on some supplements. And within a few weeks, her skin cleared up. And within a few months, we were able to go out into the sun. And it was a game changer. So I decided I have to bring some of this back to my practice. I had this thriving primary care practice. And I was turning all these patients away who said, hey, you know, I don't feel good or I'm not well. And I would say to them, everything's fine. Your blood is fine. Or take this medication. And I realized that there was more, a whole world more. So I started applying the things that I learned on, onto my patients. And every time it worked. So I said, okay, I have to formalize this. And decided to go back to school. So I started off with the Institute of Functional Medicine. Anyone who's listening to this, if you're already an NP, you can go on the Institute of Functional Medicine. I'm not promoting them. I have no connection to them, but it's a great way to start. And you uncover so much about medicine that you never learned in school. And then I went on, I got my PhD in integrative medicine, hence the title Dr. E. Over time, I developed what I called the new method. And new is spelled with a K because you always knew there was a better way. And I say that because, you know, even when my wife and I were struggling, we were offered medication, but we felt there has to be something more, even though we didn't know what it was. And we kind of knew that there was a better way to do it. And so that's why I named it the new method, because so many of my patients say either I knew it, meaning I knew that I had a medical problem and no one can find it or like a wellness problem. No one can find it. Or I knew there was a better way to treat it. So I created the new method where we kind of methodically help the patient and, you know, kind of get to the root cause of what's going on. Thanks for sharing that. That's really inspiring to hear. Can you talk a little bit about how integrative practice is different than conventional medicine at your practice? Absolutely. So again, conventional medicine, very important, super fan. I never want anyone to take it out of context. And in that respect, I mean, if I'm sick, I will take medications. My patients need medication. I will certainly prescribe it. This is not an anti-medicine or anti-conventional medicine concept, but it has its limitations. As I mentioned earlier, it looks for disease and then it treats the disease. But there's a whole world, as I said earlier, of unwellness. And that's the world of inflammation. Inflammation is actually the common denominator. So integrative care is searching for sources of inflammation. There is no room for an inflammation conversation in conventional medicine. Well, there's a caveat to that. In conventional medicine, there's room for what we call acute inflammation, right? So I fell down, I hurt myself, maybe I need a Motrin, you know, I have a headache, I need a Tylenol. Um, fever is acute inflammation. So if we have like a short-term inflammation and maybe we're going to give some Tylenol or some Motrin for it or an anti-inflammatory, there's room for that in conventional medicine. In fact, anti-inflammatories are a $30 billion industry, right? So there's plenty of room for inflammation in that respect. The inflammation that I'm talking about is inflammation, chronic inflammation, the type of inflammation that's insidious and constant and is causing other diseases. There's no room for that in primary care. So in integrative practice, in functional medicine, what we're looking for is what are the sources of inflammation that are causing your I don't feel good-itis, that are causing your disease? And we try to get to the heart of the inflammatory issue, the inflammatory process, fix that first, and then the disease gets treated as a secondary kind of byproduct. And in what other ways does inflammation affect our health? Literally anyone who is listening to this is affected by inflammation. You, your family, everyone. Inflammation affects everything. And this is not a hyperbole. It affects everything. Let's start with something that people come to me quite often for. Hey, after I eat, my belly hurts all the time, or I'm bloated all the time, or I have inflammation all the time. That inflammation in your GI system doesn't just stay in your stomach. You know, in conventional medicine, we do like to separate our systems. Go to the GI for this, go to neuro for that. The GI, if your belly is inflamed, that's going to have an effect on, on your entire system. It can affect your brain, brain fog, right? That's, that's the mild part of the spectrum, but it could also affect your brain on the extreme side of the spectrum to Alzheimer's. Because Alzheimer's is a conversation of some genetics, but also some neuroinflammation. So inflammation can take you from a mild, I don't feel good, I have a little brain fog, I have some difficulty remembering, to all the way extreme of dementia and Alzheimer's. And that's true for everything. You know, inflammation could be, hey, I don't really, you know, I have kind of like these aches and pains and 
I can't really figure out what, what's going on, all the way to I have a full-blown autoimmune issue. So inflammation starts vague symptoms of not feeling well, and that's like on one side of the spectrum. And if you leave inflammation long enough unattended, it will ultimately cause disease. Well, that's really good to know about inflammation. Going back to some of the patients that you treat in your clinic, would you be able to walk us through the typical patient journey? What we do is we first start with what we call a discovery session. So we start with a deep dive into blood work. And I mean way more than what your annual visit includes. So you're going to start with what your annual visit includes, of course, because we, I also want to make sure that there's not a disease process going on, right? I don't want to assume that your fatigue is just unwellness and there's uh, you know, a pathology happening. So we will incorporate those, those type of blood tests as well. But then we are looking for inflammatory markers. We're looking for genetic markers. And so it's a really deep dive into the blood work. Of course, we're looking for autoimmune markers. And then we also test saliva. And saliva is like blood. You can do a lot of testing on saliva. So, but for our typical patient journey, we start with cortisol testing. Cortisol testing gives us a lot of information about what's called adrenal fatigue. I won't go too deep into it right now. But the patient who doesn't feel good or who's tired all the time, we really need to know how their adrenals are doing, how their cortisol levels are. So we do this deep dive into the blood work. We do this kind of deep dive into the saliva testing. And then the patient will also fill out a very lengthy questionnaire. And there's really cool software that we use. And it's an opportunity for the patient to give us his or her entire life story, as much as they want to give us. Because unlike primary care, and again, I'm not against primary care, I practice it. Primary care is volume driven, so we don't really have time to listen to your entire life story. But in integrative medicine, we have to take that time. We, so we want to hear all of it. We bring you back in for what we call a review of finding or a discovery session. We go over the blood work. We go over the saliva testing. We go over all the questions. And then based on what we find, we create a customized plan for the patient. Because it's not a one-size-fits-all. There's not possible that it's a one-size-fits-all. Everyone has such different, you know, so many variables. Because we really believe that to truly implement change takes more than 30, 60, 90 days. So we work with our patients for a whole year. We do monthly sessions one-on-one with me to make sure that we're hitting all the right parameters, tweaking the program as it comes. But then the really key part of what we do is the weekly coaching call support Because it is very hard to make lifestyle changes without having someone to turn to with questions. Like, hey, you know, can I eat this? Should I eat this? You know, I have a headache. What should I do? I'm going on vacation. How should I manage it? So it's that support that really makes what we do differently. So the client journey starts with that discovery session where we kind of figure out what's going on. And I have to say that's one of my favorite parts because the moment when a patient tells me, oh, my God. I mean, it's not in my head. In fact, I'm writing a book and I titled it, It's Not in Your Head. Or they say, I can't wait to bring these labs home to my partner so that they know I haven't been faking it all this time. I really have a reason for being so tired. It's so empowering that moment when they're like, oh, this is what's been going on all this time. So that starts with that discovery session and then it continues for a full year as we navigate whatever is going on with the patient and getting them to the place that they want to get to. Can you tell me about a patient that touched your heart or someone that you've treated in your practice? So I have to say that so many of my patients touch my heart. And this is something that's unique in integrative medicine. But I just want to preface it by saying it's unique in integrative medicine because you have time to connect. Primary care does not allow for time because you have to see many people in order to keep your lights on. Integrative care allows for uh, more time, one-on-one your patients, so you really get to know their life story and how your treatment has affected their life. So it's really empowering as a provider to be able to say, wow, look at my, how my knowledge when applied, the knowledge that I've gained, the knowledge I worked hard to do when applied, how it has affected um, another human. It's, it's, it's you know, empowering. So if anyone's considering doing it, I, I encourage you to do so. So now, as promised, uh, an example, it's actually a husband and wife um, team. The husband came first, you know, just a little kind of, he wasn't sure if this is something he wanted to do. 
he was uh, overweight and just kind of achy in his late 40s not you know not too you know not up there kind of too young to be feeling as old as he was feeling and he said you know i'm just going to give it a try i i just feel like i don't have the energy to play with my kids anymore and i'm just tired all the time and everything hurts not really sure if this will work but hey i got nothing to lose well fast forward to one month later his wife joined so i guess it worked um and what he said to me he said you know i didn't realize how hard it was for me to pick my wallet up from the floor when it fell down and the other day my wallet fell down and i just bent out to pick it up and i got up and i realized nothing hurt me it just didn't hurt usually i would groan on the way back up if something fell down i have to pick it up and he's like then i just realized how many more things i'm doing and how more active i am with my children and then i started working with his wife and you know within a month she said i have more energy for my children and she actually reversed again all, in her 40s kind of aches and pains being you know everyone's telling her you're fine because there's nothing really she had no diseases she had she wasn't on medication but she just wasn't feeling it um she was being told she's fine see you next annual but she wasn't feeling great she joined her husband but in her lab work what we found is we do a deep dive she actually had some insulin resistance which you don't see um in regular primary care and she had the beginning of some cholesterol which again she didn't require medication but it was there so we reversed that in 2 months so not only was she symptomatically better but she changed the path of her life so we call our patients here game changers because you've changed the game of your life and she got teary eyed and she said this is the best gift i can give to my children because you know she was going down the path that would have ended up in disease and medication and later on hospitalization but she made the decision to double down make the lifestyle changes needed to not only feel better but she completely changed the course of her medical trajectory she just changed her life and what how that will affect her children so this couple really embody what we're about like symptomatically they feel better they have they are better parents now for their children and they've changed the course of their future so um those are the patients that touch my heart but they are really symbolic of all of my patients what's something else that your program has done for patients that you didn't expect it is the topic of my phd dissertation because i discovered something accidentally in the software that we use we ask our patients when we first start to list their symptoms and the severity of their symptoms this is not software that i invented it's called living matrix if anyone wants to look at it again i have no connection to them financially they're just awesome one of the questions of there's like a million questions is do you have ringing in your ears and i never really understood why that question was there you learn in med school that tinnitus that's that's the clinical term for ringing in your ear you learn that tinnitus there's no cure for it that is literally what you learn that there might be a cause for it maybe you took too much aspirin maybe you took a medication that's autotoxic but once it's there there's nothing to do for it when i saw that question on the software i was like i, I really don't know why this is here because it can't be fixed anyway and i completely ignored it and i started treating my patients for everything else that i considered you know reversible your joint pain your skin rashes your brain fog your gi symptoms all that stuff and then i kept noticing that people's tinnitus was going away and i was like what the heck and it happened again and again and again and way too much for it to be a coincidence and i realized that tinnitus is inflammatory anyone here suffering with tinnitus or no sense of tinnitus listen to what i'm saying unless it is trauma like my police officers or soldiers unless it's post trauma in which case it's not inflammatory tinnitus is inflammatory if you have tinnitus you can likely reverse it by leading an anti-inflammatory life so this is actually what i did my dissertation on because it's incidental finding but i had all this objective data this retroactive objective data that i could use and now when someone tells me they have tinnitus i look at them and i'm like i could probably fix this for you it's super exciting so this is totally not something that i expected and i'm learning more and more 
how many symptoms that we assume that we can live with are actually inflammatory. As I mentioned, the name of the company is The New Method, and new is spelled with a K, as in you always knew there was a better way. We have a website, thenewmethod.com. Of course, we're on Instagram at The New Method. Don't forget the new is spelled with a K. And we are super funny on Instagram. So even if you don't want to come in as a patient, you should, if you want to be entertained, you should follow us. And then we have a YouTube channel called The New Method by Dr. E. Thanks, everyone, for listening today. You can also find the Nurse Practitioner Journal on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And please also be sure to give the podcast a rating in Apple if you like today's episode. This podcast does not constitute medical advice and should not be taken as such and does not replace professional judgment or advice. The ideas and viewpoints expressed in this podcast do not reflect the official position of the speakers, authors, affiliated organizations, the Nurse Practitioner Journal, or Walter Score. Thanks for joining us today for the episode of the Nurse Practitioner Podcast. Before we close off the episode, we wanted to mention that the hosts of this podcast are not clinicians, and this podcast is for informational purposes only. Thanks for listening.